2023 was quite the year for sewing for me and I am just so grateful for all of the projects that I was able to do this year. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the last video of 2023. What? a crazy whirlwind here. This has been one here on YouTube because I feel like I've had the opportunity and the time finally to post a lot of videos and share them with you all and continue to grow this channel. But just personally in my life, it has been the most insane year ever. And so if you have been following along with this channel and with my life all year long, you probably know all of the crazy changes that happened. I posted a life update video in like August to kind of just update you on all of the crazy changes but with that came the opportunity to finally get back into sewing and have the time to rediscover and pour time into that creative passion that I love and from that came so many amazing and fun sewing projects sewing projects that I've wanted to do for years big crazy thrift flip dream projects learning new skills, learning new techniques, just so many things. And so I wanted to take this last video of 2023 and kind of do a recap of everything that I created and sewed this year in case you haven't been around for all of the projects that I have shared here on YouTube. And also some of these are projects that have like never been shared or only were shared on social media or TikTok and not here on YouTube. So I wanted to kind of show you and share with you all everything that I was able to make and sew this year because I'm really proud of it all. My original plan for this video and what I really wanted to do was pull out literally all of the pieces that I made this year and try them all on for a video. But considering where I am in life right now and the fact that a lot of my sewing projects are actually in storage, that was just not very feasible. So I'm gonna take you through and kind of talk about each project. I will show pictures and or videos of all of them and just share what I loved, the challenges, um, just all of the things about them. So let's dive into all of my sewing projects of 2023. What is so crazy about this year's sewing is that from January to June, I really didn't do a lot of sewing. I only sewed four things and they were all wedding related. Uh, if you didn't know, I got married this year in June and uh, my life has changed so much since then in so many great ways. And so from January to June, I was working on wedding projects. So that was my wedding dress, which was a major thrift flip project, my reception dress, and then my wedding veil and my sister's wedding veil because she actually got married two weeks before me. So lots of craziness for our family this summer, but lots of fun as well. So my first sewing project this year was my wedding dress. And I think I, it actually took me like four or five months to make. And that's really because I was still working full time as a fashion design teacher at the same time in the midst of juggling a like long distance relationship, planning a wedding. And so I would only work on my wedding dress for like small spurts of time on different weekends. But anyways, my wedding dress right here was a major thrift flip project. I thrifted this dress. I keep saying like five or six years ago, I think that's when I thrifted it, but I can't find like the original picture of when like I bought it at the thrift store. But it was a dress from like the 80s and I turned it into my dream wedding dress that had all of these fun modern elements with a lot of fun classic elements and was just kind of this one of a kind, funky, unique and fun wedding dress that I feel like totally fit my personality. It was such a dream to wear and I just feel like all the wedding photos that came from it, it just like fit my perfect vision of what I wanted my wedding to be. Maybe I'll share some wedding photos up on the screen as I'm talking about this, but that was my first sewing project of the year in addition to my wedding veil, which you can also see in these photos and these videos, I wanted kind of a vintage mixed with classic, mixed with like fun, trendy, modern. Like that was my kind of aesthetic and theme. And the original dress was this fun kind of polka dotty Swiss dot fabric that I, I just always wanted like a polka dot type of wedding dress and then all of the tiers and then kind of the bustier type of bodice and the puff sleeves were just such a dream. And then I added a fun kind of retro detail to my veil by adding like a bow to it. So it's kind of like an Ariana Grande type of veil. 
super fun. A week before my wedding, I made my reception dress, um, which was also really great. I made it out of a shower curtain. Uh, big surprise there that I've been holding on for two years because I had this like vision of what dress I wanted to make and I just never kind of knew how I was going to make the pattern and then um, a no me pattern came out that was pretty close to the original design that I wanted to create and so I used that so I always wanted to use that like textured white shower curtain to make a Cecily Bonson inspired dress and I found this no me pattern it's um, ME 2016 and I used the shorter version to make my reception dress and it turned out to be like the perfect version of what I originally wanted the dress out of that fabric to be like. And it was fun to wear it at my reception and kind of change into something more comfortable and just wear a fun cute little dress with sneakers. Outside of my wedding dress, my reception dress, my veil, my sister's veil. Then we got into the summertime, which was my downtime for teaching because teachers are off in Texas for the summertime. And so I was actually not in Texas at that time. I was in Oklahoma with my husband um, for the summer and we thought we were going to be moving to Texas after the summer. Tons of crazy plans changed. But anyways, I did do a bit of sewing while there. And so after I got married, the fun kind of summer sewing project that I did was this like orange dress. And I have all these pictures on my phone to like remember what I made and describe it. And it had all these like colorful flamingos. It was this really like fun, funky fabric. And what was crazy is that I was working with like only two patterns that I had in Oklahoma. I didn't have my slopers. And so I essentially took the batter back <laughs> pattern piece of a dress, use it as like the front of the dress. Anyways, there was like a lot of finagling that happened to make this dress, but it turned out so, so cute. I love the back of it. It has like this lace up detail. I just thought it was so fun. Definitely would love to make this into a pattern that all of you can get at some point. Um, fun fact or like little plug is that one of my goals of 2024 is to learn how to do like digital pattern making and then turn that into patterns that you all can buy. So if you're like watching one of my tutorials, you can then get the pattern and actually sew along with me. All right, after that, we got into some additional kind of fun sewing. I feel like my personal style has changed so, so much this year, so drastically. And that's definitely influenced a lot of the things that I've chosen to sew. But then a lot of my projects also centered around um, like a family cruise that we went on in July and then my husband and I went to Italy in September for our honeymoon and so I also sewed some things for that. So a lot of my sewing inspiration came from just my changes in my personal style plus like trips that I knew I would go on and I love to make things for trips. So anyways after that I made this really fun dress that was inspired by a dress I saw on a girl that I follow on Instagram. Her name is Morgan and she has just this adorable like antique kind of homeware line and all of her dresses are just super classic. So that is where I got the inspiration for this dress. It kind of gives me like little women inspired vibes which I definitely love and the whole point of this dress was to make kind of a dropped waist and by dropped waist it's not like 1920s more so where the instead of at the front where the waist is straight across it kind of goes into a v from your hips down to the center and kind of makes this really kind of different type of waistline and i just thought that was really fun and i had this really unique yellow and orange and green striped in a florally fabric so i wanted to use that for this dress added plop sleeves and then ruffles <laughs> i had ruffles just so many things and in the middle of sewing i actually like regret adding ruffles because i hate doing gathers but they always look really pretty at the end of the day so that was this dress it was a super fun dress to make pretty simple and i really love how it turned out then i made my 2023 version of a bandana dress like two years ago i made the really colorful patchwork bandana dress inspired by psychedelic outlaw or psychic outlaw i think it was a really popular video on my channel like two years ago and I saw this yellow bandana dress on TikTok from a creator and it inspired me to make a pink version of it and I shared that in a YouTube video. It's a super easy beginner project because it just utilizes all the squares of a bandana and then everything is sewn in square. So it's kind of a fun country cowgirl inspired uh, 
dress and an easy great beginner project so that video is up on my channel and that was kind of a fun summer sewing project then i was inspired by all of the boxer styles that i kept seeing on like tiktok and pinterest as we got into the fall season summer kind of came to a close i didn't really sew a ton of things in the summer i sewed more things in the fall but some of the things i sewed in the fall were for summer climates because they're from italy and we're going to get to those projects so in the fall like for my fall style and sewing i made the striped boxer shorts because like boxer shorts worn as everyday wear were a really big thing this fall in addition to pajama pants which i also made some of and so the boxer shorts are fun i also shared a tutorial for those on my channel they were just green and white stripes actually the same fabric as my shirt that i'm wearing right now made out of a sheet big surprise there so that was a fun project and if you want to learn how to make your own version of like pajama shorts and or boxer shorts styled for everyday wear i have the video showing you how to actually create your own pattern from a pair of shorts that you have at home after the boxer shorts i wanted to make like a cream midi skirt for fall that was definitely a big popular piece this fall as i feel like cream or white midi skirts because they're such a classic piece you can kind of pair them with everything and so i kept seeing those styles of skirts everywhere and so i kind of made my own version which was this cream midi skirt that kind of had like these folds and tucks at the bottom and a ruffle i like how it turned out i definitely want to make like a different version of it that's has more fabric and is wider because i was working with such a small amount of fabric for the skirt but it was a great fun little project that i made and i was able to wear with like a lot of different tops and sweaters in the early fall then after my kind of fall projects i kind of got back into summer types of projects because i was prepping for our honeymoon trip to italy and in italy even though it was like september into october it's very much still summertime and for me when i think of italy i also think about like summer prints and summer colors so i made three specific dresses for italy based on like where i knew we were going the colors of the places styles that i felt would kind of fit and so one of those is this lemon dress i actually used a free pattern from mood sewing society and i actually filmed a tutorial for this dress it just never got released because by the time we went on our trip and came back it was like the fall and releasing a video about making a lemon dress just didn't seem very folly so i'll probably release it in like spring or summer of 2024 so that you can see how this dress was made and make it for yourself because i really really love the pattern so i specifically made this lemon dress to wear to a restaurant in sorrento italy called o Perishino. it's a like lemon restaurant essentially when you're eating you're just surrounded by lemon trees in a lemon garden it was so cool it's a very popular restaurant on tiktok and so i really wanted to go to that restaurant and as is madison fashion i had to dress in theme to go to this restaurant which is why i made the lemon dress and so that was a fun project in preparation for italy the other dress i made for italy was this blue and white dress made out of a contrasting like set of sheets so one of them was a fitted sheet that was blue background with white print and then the flat sheet was white background with blue print and so i wanted to make kind of this like multi mixed print dress it's based off of a style and pattern from a dress i made like three or four years ago it's like the multicolored um gingham checkered dress that's based on a london brand dress anyways made that dress out of some patterns that i already had and i was specifically making that for italy for positano and sorrento because i just felt like blue and white like really fit like the coastal italy vibe and so that was that dress that i made in like september so again didn't really fit where my kind of weather was in wisconsin but definitely fit italy and then the last dress that i made for italy was this really fun yellow dress made out of a set of vintage sheets and vintage pillowcases that had this like butterfly print i've had them for years and i just could never figure out how i wanted to utilize those sheets to be able to accentuate like the butterfly print but i decided to do kind of an elastic high waist ish bodice that was really just like pull over your head super stretchy but fun puff sleeves that accentuated like the butterflies on the sleeves and the bottom of the dress and i really love how it turned out it was a super fun and easy dress to make for the most part 
and it definitely fit Italy pretty well and I loved wearing it. After that, I came home and I made like four pairs of pants. I guess I was just sick of making dresses, but I was a pattern tester for Sydney Graham's Lane Pant, which if you are new to sewing and you're looking for like a really cute stylish pair of pants, it's also very easy to make. I'm just like a huge fan of the Lane Pant. I literally have four pairs of them. I made my mom a pair for Christmas. Anyways. I was a pattern tester for her pattern and so this is the first pair of lane pants that I made out of this fun like bright bold butterfly print fabric that was actually curtains that I got from the thrift store. And so that was my first version of her pants and that was really fun to be a pattern tester for her and then I just fell in love with those pants and I've literally made multiple other options and versions of those. So outside of those pants I also made a brown pair of lane pants which I've gotten a ton of wear out of. And both the brown version and the butterfly version have like pockets on the side. Also, totally am just now remembering this, I also made a pair of bloomers for myself for the fall. Um, here's a picture of me wearing it under a dress. So the whole theory and idea is based off of A Little House on the Prairie and how in the fall and the winter, the Ingles would switch their undergarments from cotton to flannel because they were warmer and I recently moved to Wisconsin where the fall is decently cold the winter is really cold I love wearing dresses and skirts though and so I was trying to figure out how I could like layer clothes and still be warm and stylish and fashionable so I used Sydney's pattern for the lane pants and just made them shorter took off the pockets and added ruffles and made like my own version of pantaloons or bloomers to wear under dresses and so that's been really fun I made out of flannel super warm and I literally look like an Ingles. Um, I don't always look this prairie like when I wear them but that kind of gives you an idea of like what I created. Outside of the lane pants that had pockets I also made a version that was based off of the Scandi striped like pajama pants. I have gotten really big into Scandinavian fashion. I feel like it definitely fits my more kind of eclectic style. Uh, fashion that I like to kind of go in when it comes to dressing and putting outfits together and so kind of wearing the pajama pants with oversized sweaters or fun tops in a Scandinavian kind of streetwear style fashion. I was trying to find a perfect type of fabric to make those pants so I found a duvet and one side was white with thin gray stripes and so I made those into kind of a pajama scandy pant. Um, I took off the pockets from the lame pant and got these and they have definitely been on repeat this winter and fall because it's so easy to just throw them over a pair of leggings. You're still really cute, still really comfortable and still warm. Um, so there's that and that's also like a really great example I feel like of how my style and fashion has evolved and changed this year from more of like funky fashion design teacher to exploring different styles, styling pieces in different ways, but also adopting a lot of Scandinavian inspired fashion, which I also feel like I've been inspired a little bit to adopt that because in Wisconsin, there's a lot of Scandinavian influence, just like historically, culturally, a lot of people have Scandinavian types of backgrounds. And so it's kind of just been fun to embrace that kind of living up here as well. Hence my shirt that I'm wearing. Outside of all of the pants, I also made two fun like patchwork inspired dresses and I combined those into one YouTube video. And so one of them was this fun, I feel like I just should call this like the scarecrow patchwork dress because that's literally what it looks like. But I made this dress to wear on my birthday in November and this dress has the same base silhouette of the green and the orange and the yellow like striped dress that I made earlier in the summer it has like the dropped V waist but I added long sleeves to it and then I wanted to add a ruffles all around the neckline and then I still had a ruffles at the bottom of the skirt. This was a fun dress for the fall. Um, I loved wearing it. I just love the style and silhouette of it. It's very classic but it also still kind of has those fun elements as well. And then this is the other patchwork dress that I made. When I say patchwork these two dresses, I didn't actually like patchwork the fabric together. I found the this fabric specifically at a thrift store um, and I was like freaking out when I found it because it was just such a like funky 90s quilt patchwork print 
and I wanted you to do something really fun with it. The other fabric I had had from my grandma. But this dress I made as well in the YouTube video with the other patchwork dress and I show you how I created the pattern for it. And so this dress turned out really fun. I love that it's really loose and comfortable but it has these like fun ruffles on the front. And this is definitely a dress that I would love to turn into a pattern for all of you. So I keep saying that, maybe the more I say it the more I'll hold myself to getting to the point of being able to release patterns next year for all of you. After I finished that patchwork dress, I then started into all of my Christmas present sewing. And so from like mid-November to through all of December, I was literally making Christmas presents for all of my family and then my husband's family. So like all of my new in-laws. So there was a lot of fun pro projects that I made there. Oh, before I made all my Christmas presents, I made these fun patchwork stockings. I filmed a video and tutorial for them. I wanted a way to kind of incorporate fun vintage heritage inspiration into my Christmas decoration, but also utilize a lot of fabric scraps that I had. So I came up with this patchwork stocking and I love how they turned out. I made one for my husband and I. I just can't wait to make more in the future, but that was a fun tutorial to put out for Christmas time. Then I started into all my Christmas sewing, which ended up being like a ton of fun, cute tote bag. So there's this tote bag that I made for my sister-in-law and I'm obsessed with how it turned out. It's based on a ton of really cute quilted tote bags that I kept seeing on Pinterest. And so I made that quilt tote bag, quilted tote bag for her. I made this ruffle edge um, kind of larger tote bag for my grandma and then I made a the same thing in a different print for my husband's grandmother. I made a lot of book sleeves for people this Christmas. Uh, this one specifically I made for my sister because she's a big reader and so that was a fun project. A lot of these tote bags and this book sleeve I combined into a video where I shared five different gift projects for Christmas. But obviously those projects you can literally make all year long for yourself or for other people. And all of those are on my YouTube channel. So if you want to learn how to make, I think I did three different tote bags or maybe two different tote bags, book sleeves, and then a jumbo scrunchie and a bow. So like a ton of really fun sewing projects there. <clears throat> I also made my mom a pair of lane pants. Hers were cream because she specifically requested those for Christmas. So I made her a pair of those. So at this point I've made like five pairs of lane pants and I'm definitely going to be making more. Um, then I made a lot of, well, not a lot, two isn't a lot, but my first kind of menswear project. I really don't do a lot of menswear sewing because usually I'm making things for myself. But when it came to Christmas, I wanted to make things for other people. So I made this shirt for my brother. So it was my first like menswear button up and it turned out actually so well. I think I work myself up to thinking menswear is complicated when it really isn't. It's honestly like a lot easier than women's wear. Um, and so the fun story behind this is that my brother picked out this fabric from Mood Fabrics in New York two years ago when we visited in the summertime. And I always told him, that I would turn it into a shirt for him and I've just never had time. So I finally turned it into a shirt for him this Christmas and it turned out so good and so fun. I also did my first quilt jacket project in December for my brother-in-law um, like three or four months ago. He talked about how cool quilt jackets were and so I wanted to make him a quilt jacket for Christmas. So this is the quilt jacket I made him. I'm obsessed with how it turned out. I sourced the quilt off of eBay and I just love the very kind of haphazard patchwork quilt style of this quilt, but also all of like the blue and red and brown colors. I turned out so well. I actually filmed this project and I will be sharing it in January or February. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to make this quilt jacket um, and make your own pattern for it as well. But he really loved that. And then I made a lot of other cute tote bags. I made this tote bag um, for a sister-in-law. This is actually based off of a tutorial that Sydney Graham shared as well. It's like the most perfect, cute little tote bag. I made this tote bag for my other sister-in-law and I just kind of created the pattern for it. It kind of has a elasticy drawstring um, top of the bag and then like a tie strap, which was really cute. And then I made this tote bag for my mother-in-law, which I also really, really love. I'm kind of thinking that in 2024, I also am going to take some of these tote bag designs that I created for Christmas presents and turn them into bags that I can sell on Etsy. So if you want some really cute tote bags made by me, 
I'm hoping that in spring of 2024, I'm going to be able to offer some of those on Etsy. And then again, my long-term goal is to turn all of these into actual like patterns that you all can buy and make. Like that is my next skill that I need to learn. And sewing is digital pattern making for you all to buy. I know how to do flat pattern making, but anyways, we're getting off track. All right, outside of all of those Christmas presents, once all of those were done, I decided that I needed to make myself a Christmas Eve dress and then also Christmas pajamas. And that was those two projects were literally made two or three days before Christmas Eve and Christmas Day because as sewists, we wait till like the last minute to make our outfit that we're going to wear. But I wanted something super Christmassy and I had found this Christmas green, red, and white patchwork printed fabric at a thrift store with the other crazy quilty patchwork 90s fabric from the other dress. Um, freaking out when I found it and knew I wanted to turn it into a Christmas dress. I based this Christmas dress off of the Damson Matter brown and black checkered black bow dress that has literally been all over TikTok. I feel like everyone has this Damson Matter dress. I love it so I understand why everyone has it. As a seamstress, I'm like, cute, I could make that. Um, so I figured out how to make my own version of it, turned it into a Christmas dress, and love how it turned out. I felt like a Christmas present with all the bows and Christmas colors, and it was so fun. I'm hoping to make another version of this dress in the spring and share the whole process with all of you so that you can make your own version of it, because it's actually a pretty easy dress to replicate and make for yourself. And then I really, really wanted a fun Christmas pair of pajamas. Well, really, it wasn't that I wanted a cute pair of Christmas pajamas for Christmas Day. It was that I really wanted the Hill House green and white striped pajamas that had sold out online because they were so cute and so popular. They were also out of my budget, so I always knew that I was never going to buy it. But I thought, hey, that would be a really fun pair of pajamas to make. Then I remembered I had leftover green and white fabric from my boxer shorts um, and I had like literally just enough to make these pajamas. Um, I literally had to patchwork like the fabric together to make it long enough for the sleeves, but we had just enough and so I decided to make my own version of the Hill House pajamas. Um, obviously my version included a much larger collar, very like Puritan Scandi collar, but I love it. Um, I found a really great butterick pattern for the bodice and for the giant collar. And so I decided to just go with the large collar that was originally on the pattern instead of making it smaller like the Hill House version. And I honestly love it. I'm wearing it right now. Um, what I love about these pajamas is that you can wear them as pajamas and so they're super cute, but you could also wear it as like a matching set out if you wanted, but you can also then wear the bodice by itself. Hence like I'm wearing today with a pair of overalls. And you can also wear the pants by themselves as like scandy pants. And those pants were also made from the lane pattern. So anyways, everyone needs to go get that pattern. And then also the pattern for the bodice was really cute. I think I'm going to do a sew along for this bodice in the new year because it's just such a great bodice. I think everyone is really into this like giant collar trend right now. I personally think that they're a great classic piece and just add a lot of fun to any outfit so I think I'm hopefully at some point maybe going to do a sew long for that actual pattern so that you can just learn how to make it yourself because it's such a great top to have and that's it that is my sewing wrapped of 2023 which was literally all like chunked into the last part of the year from like I feel like July to December is when I did a majority of my sewing I don't even know how many sewing projects this was let's see I think it was like 35 sewing projects this year um, because there was a lot of stuff that I made for Christmas presents that was just like duplicates of tote bags and um, book sleeves but like 35 sewing projects this year it's kind of insane that's a lot considering all my past years I've just still slowly been sewing things and sharing videos here on YouTube but this year specifically I have been able to share a lot and I'm so grateful for that. Part of it is that I decided to leave my teaching job because I ended up moving from Texas to Wisconsin in August. Um, and so that opened up a lot of time in my schedule where I have not had that the past five years to actually pour time into all of these projects that I've wanted to do. And so I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for the opportunity to get back into sewing and I feel like refined my love and passion for it. 
and then also start to kind of rediscover these ideas of things that I want to turn in to projects. So 2023 was a year of tons of life changes in my life. Um, a lot of personal growth and just discovery and creativity and being able to share these projects with all of you here on YouTube from sewing projects and fun creative tutorials to my new classroom series that comes out on Thursdays where I actually take you through actual lessons and techniques and projects that I taught in the classroom when I was a high school fashion online teacher. So I'm so excited for all of the new project and ideas on the horizon for 2024 continuing to do the classroom series where i'm taking you through those skills and techniques that you need to know if you are a beginner sewist or you're intermediate and you're wanting to continue to grow your skills to continuing to sharing all of my fun sewing projects that i just want to inspire you with as i am being inspired sewing them for myself i have lots of fun ideas and goals and just tons of dreams for 2024 when it comes to this YouTube channel, um, sewing, creativity, sewing patterns, resources, courses, maybe all of those things. Um, and so thank you all for following along and continuing to support my creativity, support my dreams and support sewing and being creative and making your own things and tuning in and following along and watching my videos. I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you for being along on this journey this year of all of these different sewing projects that I've shared here on YouTube, but also a lot of sewing projects that I share on TikTok. So if you aren't following me on TikTok, make sure you follow there because there's actually specific things that I only share on TikTok that I don't share on YouTube. So secret fun things. Um, and if you also want to stay updated on just the happenings of my daily life and just daily outfits. You can also follow me on Instagram for more personal things that aren't always sewing related, but I still share sewing things on there as well. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for following along. And I can't wait to see you all in 2024 for all of the new fun, amazing, creative sewing things that are yet to be shared and yet to be discovered and yet to be inspired. So thank you for following along. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you in the new year. Happy new year. Bye.